Hello everyone, my name is Michael Strike, and today's going to be an interesting dialogue. I'm going to try to build this uh, Venn diagram between cryptography, quantum, and Bitcoin, and just try to find that sweet zone to where it all makes sense. Anyone that doesn't know me, uh, classically I'm a, I'm a systems engineer, a uh, solutions architect. I've built computer networks and I've been in IT for over 20 years. However, my alter ego is uh, the director of outreach on the Quantum Resistant Ledger project. So I'm going to bring that up on screen right here. This is who we are, www.qrl.org. So who are we? We're uh, funded by a nonprofit organization, not really here to sell anything. I've had that question asked a few times, what are you selling? Not really here to sell anything. We're effectively just trying to solve problems and communicating what existential threats are on the horizon. We have our own layer one blockchain. We're not an ERC-20. And instead of, uh, our blockchain is built that such that it's provably resistant against a quantum, uh, sufficiently powerful quantum computer, which we'll get exactly what that means in just a moment here. So our code's been doubly audited and uh, it's, it uses cryptographic code that is recommended by the U.S. government, specifically the NIST, which is, uh, which is essentially the quantum brains of the U.S. government. And there's, I don't think there's any other project that can say that, uh, that, they are, that they're using those, that degree of standards. So uh, we've been running our chain uh, for about six years now. We're not new. We're not new. We've been here six That is a long time in the life cycle of an altcoin. So, what problem, what problem uh, are we here to solve? We solve the problem of a sufficiently powerful quantum computer being able to potentially disrupt cryptography, which of course includes Bitcoin. We do this by having built our own layer one chain, like, we, like I just discussed, and uh, our ticker is QRL. And I get, I get this question a lot, and I'm going to go over what a quantum computer is in just a moment. I get this question. Could can, Bitcoin, can it just hard fork? They'll just hard fork it. I, I give all of, the, all of the credibility in the world to blockchain developers or some of the most creative people that I know. The answer, yeah. Bitcoin can hard fork. But you will not be able to get all of the coins moved over. So if that's a me if 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 thirty percent fifty percent is a metric for is a is a good metric for success and you can high five you'd be able to high five your boss at work, then yes you can hard fork Bitcoin. So uh, who's here actually heard of quantum computers? Who's here? Excuse me. Who's heard of quantum computers before? Raise your hand. Just, all right. So you got one like one. Okay. Cool. Six or seven people. Uh, let's do a real quick rundown. Just it'll, I'll make this one quick on what it is. Uh, so quantum computers is. Uh, it's, it's a completely different type of processing information and quantum, in that it uses, the, uh, it uses uh, quantum properties such as superposition, uh, entanglement, things that exist at the very smallest scales. And it does this, and it does this in uh, very interesting ways. So uh, whereas uh, uh, everyone knows what a transistor is, right? We've got billions of them in our CPUs now. You probably, there's probably 400, 500 billion of them just sitting here right now. Um, those are very, very deterministic ways of solving problems. A transistor knows what it's doing. Input, input in, and deterministically, you should get the same output. As long as you get the same input, you should get the same output in a very deterministic way. Quantum computers are actually quite different. Uh, their output is much more probabilistic, and it, as opposed to deterministic. So you will not always get the same answer on a quantum CPU, but you'll be able to start narrowing in and getting to that answer. And a lot of that is because uh, of noise that exists and some engineering challenges that still exist. But these things are being developed by the smartest minds in the world. I said this yesterday under a veil of secrecy that I would argue is not that different than the Manhattan Project. So, it, in fact, they're, they're, if a nation state were, were able to sufficiently develop a quantum computer that was powerful enough in order to uh, uh, pull, pull, pull IP packets or frames, you know, over off the fiber, there'd be no incentive for them to let anyone know what's going on. 
So, <clears throat> whereas a transistor can be in one, uh, one of two states, a, a qubit, which runs on a, on a quantum processor, can be in a multitude, almost infinite amount of states. So, with that being said, that's a quick background. Let's talk about Bitcoin for a second. I'm going to try and bring up my graph. So you start off with a private key, you apply ECC, and then you end up uh, with the public key, and you can share this public key. So when you perform a, a transaction output on the Bitcoin network, and these are the original transactions, there's been some additional scripts and some modifications since then, but when you, when you perform a transaction, you sign, you, you signed and billed that transaction with your private key that nobody knows except for you, and then you present your public key along with the transaction to a node. And it's that, it's that node's job to take that transaction and broadcast it everywhere else. So here's the problem. It's very easy to go from a private key, generate a 256-bit random number, go from a private key, and then get your public key. That's just building a wallet. Okay, that's how Bitcoin started. That's considered a one-way function, a classical one-way function. But be able to take a public key and get a private key, that is classically impossible, and we're talking order of magnitude of potentially millions, possibly more, of, of all classical CPUs in, in an enormous amount of time that's in comparison to the, <laughs> how all the universe is. So, uh, it, and that's just, because of the, that's just because of the amount of permutations that are possible. So there is, no, there is no known way, no classical way to take a public key and convert it into a private key unless, unless you have a sufficiently powerful quantum computer running Shor's algorithm. I'm talking about what Shor's, Shor's algorithm is. But the, the possibility is that if the quantum computer is sufficiently powerful, it can take a public key and create a private key, the big no-no. And once you can do that, he who holdeth the private key holdeth the wallet and the funds and the money. If you want to come talk to me downstairs, I, I have a few attack vectors that we can talk about what those attack vectors would look like. Uh, basically, it comes down to uh, not your keys, not your crypto, but also, not your node, not your rules. So you could, have a, you could have a rogue node that receives a singular transaction, forwards it off to a quantum computer, while Joel's waiting for his transaction to show up in the Explorer. It's already being processed. You don't necessarily have, you're not necessarily limited by the block time. So let's go look at some references. It's not, this is not just a me thing. This is, let's bring this up here, Apple iMessage. They are, according to them, I have not dug into details, are post-quantum secure. According to them, in theory, there's this store now, decrypt later, if someone's got a white wire shark running on the network and they generate a PCAP file. In other words, they, they're just capturing the cipher text, you know, on the, uh, on the Ethernet. You should, they should, in the future, five, seven, eight years from now, they should not be able to get to your messages. Cloudflare. Major big operator on the internet helps prevent DDoS attacks. Uh, hosts many many websites. Handles a lot of internet traffic. Right now they are. I think it was two to four percent of their systems are upgraded to be pulse quantum secure. That's a big deal. And they're doing that with a special implementation of TLS, HTTPS, and uh, TLS 1.3. Number three, the National Quantum Initiative. By the Biden administration, federal agencies have to put together, Congress has to put together a plan to make government compu computers and transmissions post-quantum secure. I don't use it much, but signal, quantum computer, quantum resistant. Here's, the, here's my favorite. So this is a quick article. This is the, getting close to the end of my presentation here. This is an article by, written by Vitalik. Uh, we all know who Vitalik is, wonderful guy, big fan of Ethereum, revolutionary. Same problem, has a similar problem as Bitcoin when it comes to the digital signature algorithm. So this is the plan. Oh, and if you go to Ethereum's roadmap, quantum, post-quantum security is in the roadmap as part of the future. But a promise in a roadmap, a quantum secure blockchain does not it make. So if you scroll down, the first step in the event of a quantum emergency is to 
revert all blocks after the first block where it's clear, uh, where it's clearly a large, uh, large scale theft has been happening. Okay, nothing to see here. Let's go to the next, step. wait a second. Revert them. That is not good. So there's this whole trust concept of code is law and you trust Bitcoin because you trust the code. Like it doesn't care where you went to school, it doesn't care about your affluency, it doesn't care how tall you are, it doesn't care about anything because it treats everyone the same. You trust it. You, you can't, you can't roll black, you just, you can't roll black, back the blockchain. I mean, that, that it breaks immutability. And immutability is one of, uh, is, is one of uh, blockchain's core tenets. And then you'll be able to replay the transactions. I just send money over, and then all of a sudden, wait a sec, did I? That's the whole point. So uh, he puts the, he does put together a lot of interesting technical stuff, and I'd encourage you guys to look this up. There's a links up there. You maybe do a screenshot, and you might probably be able to find them. That's my presentation. Thank you.